Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Is everyone able to hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, well, thank you everyone um, for joining for um, Graduate Funding Information Service, also known as GFIS, um, for their quarterly winter funding workshop. Um, my name is Leah Davis, um, and I will introduce myself as we go. Um, but I just want to let everyone know at the start of this, I know everyone has a lot of questions. Um, there will be time at the end for a Q&A, so make sure to use the Q&A um, options so I'm able to get to the questions that everyone has. We'll have about 15 to 20 minutes at the end of this session. Um, this will also be recorded and it will be posted. This is being recorded and it will be posted on the GFIS Research Guide. So this is an agenda of what we'll be going over today. Um, I'm giving a very general interview. Thank you to everyone who filled out the registration form. I did try to highlight some of the specific questions that everyone had. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, the Graduate Funding Information Service, um, some of the guides that we have and our services, and then do a general overview of funding, the funding process, when to apply and where to search. Um, I have a few planning tips that I'd like to share as well, and then on-campus resource resources, and then a Q&A at the end. So my name is Aaliyah Davis. Um, I'm currently a student in the Information School. I'm in the second year of my Master's of Library and Information Science program, um, and I'm also the GFIS manager. So GFIS um, is an information service that's in the library. It's located in on the ground floor of the Allen Library Research Commons in the back corner where um, red A and C are. Um, and the main purpose of GFIS is to help current and admitted graduate students as well as um, faculty and um, postdocs and researchers learn the skills and tools to find funding. So these are some of the services that GFIS offers. Um, there are one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one advising and consultations, funding presentations such as this one, and then there's also a funding research guide um, that is on the LibGuides page that all of the UW Library research guides are on. And then there's also a funding blog. And so these are some of the resources, as I mentioned before. Um, so on the LibGuide, there's a graduate funding research guide to how to find graduate funding. Um, this provides a really great overview of the whole funding process. And this workshop is really uh, taking the information that's on that guide and making it digestible and understandable in a presentation form. So all of the resources and all the things mentioned um, in this workshop, you'll find on the guide as well. And then the other one we have is the GFIS blog. Um, so this is a place where uh, funding opportunities are posted. And if you can see on the screenshot of this, there's this little subscribe button. So if you wanna stay up to date about various funding opportunities, scholarships, um, assistantships, fellowships, other opportunities for graduate students, you can subscribe to this um, and you'll get an email notification whenever a new post is added. Um, and these are UW specific opportunities as well as external opportunities. So um, just start with a general overview, some of the terms that you might have heard um, with funding. Um, so there are different types of funding. There are grant scholarships and fellowships, which these are basically interchangeable terms. Um, there's not a real difference between them. It's just um, the term that whatever funding body uses um, to call these, there are awards that you do not have to pay back. Um, there are some fellowships that have um, extra perks, I would say, like mentorship, or there might be an expectation that you work in a current field afterwards, um, but that's not true for all of them. Um, the other type of funding would be financial aid, um, and this is managed, managed fully by um, Office of Student Financial Aid, and it's usually loans, and then they also have some federal grants um, for specific programs, and then also some tuition programs, but that is outside of the realm of GFIS. Um, so if you have any questions about financial aid or loans, definitely reach out 
um, to the Office of Student Financial Aid. Um, and then the other type of funding that is unique to UW, other colleges and universities have this as well. Um, but I'll be speaking specifically about assistantships at the University of Washington. And those are um, appointments or job positions that are offered in different offices, academic departments and research centers around the college. And so on the topic of assistantship, before I get more into the specifics of the different types of funding, um, for those of you that don't know about assistantship, so um, this is a kind of funding that is really just a job you would apply to it like you would any other employment opportunity. Um, and those are teaching assistantships, staff assistantships, and research assistantships. Um, teaching um, assistantships are just as they sound. Um, you would either be assisting a professor in instruction or in some cases, usually um, for PhD students, um, teaching a class of undergraduates or master's students. Um, staff assistantships are more administrative or program, um, program management or service management positions that are offered in different uh, student facing offices on campus, some of the student life offices, also some of the community-centered offices on campus have graduate staff assistantship positions. And then research assistantships would be um, working research with a faculty PI member, and those are at, or within academic departments or at other um, research centers or institutes around campus. Um, and as far as funding goes, this has the fastest turnaround um, than other opportunities. Um, because they're recruiting for a, a position. And these, um, the benefits that come with most assistantships are tuition waiver, um, regardless of if you're an international student, if you're not resident, or if you're a fee-based student. Um, they also come with uh, a monthly stipend that's paid on to payments um, and medical benefits that include healthcare, dental, and also childcare benefits that the university offers to all of its employees. Um, and if you have an assistantship position that does not come with a tuition waiver or benefits, um, you're offered a higher stipend in lieu of the tuition waiver. And it ends up being about the same amount of money if you um, add up how much your tuition is with what the stipend is. Um, the higher stipend that you get with the positions um, that don't come with those added benefits, which are ones where you're working maximum 19 hours per week, um, you would get um, more, more money in your paycheck. And some of the places that you can look um, for assistantships are going to be on the Chiefest blog. Someone mentioned that the note there was incorrect. So um, on the research, on the research guide, um, the link on that page would be correct, which it looks like someone answered that. So thank you so much. Um, you can also find assistantship opportunities on UW employment pages and on various departments and then also on Handshake. So other than um, assistantships, which um, will fund um, primarily your education and also living expenses, um, there are other purposes of funding. So. This is a pretty long list and it's not exhaustive. This is taken mostly from some of the questions that folks had and then um, just generally what you can use your, um, use any funding that you receive for. Um, so the first one would obviously be tuition, funding your education, um, finding funding for research. Um, that could be for summer research or research that you're doing during the school year. Um, Project-based grants, and then first uh, PhD um, students, um, dissertation, dissertation research and completion. There are also study abroad grants available, um, grants for attending conferences that you're presenting at and uh, paying for registration. And with NUW, there is also funding um, for RSOs, which are student organizations, for you to put on events, um, and then also if 
your RSO is traveling to any particular event or presenting somewhere, you can also get funding for that. So there are a few places that you can get funding from. Um, I'm going to break down these three concentric circles. Um, you can apply from many different places um, within these three circles and there are uh, benefits and also setbacks to all of them. So we'll go through um, what kind of funding you can get from these sources and maybe what are some of the challenges or upsides. So the first one and the smallest one is going to be from within your department. This is not gonna be that competitive, but it is also the smallest pool of money. Um, so things you get from your department um, when you're offered admission would be need and merit-based aid if um, your department has a scholarship that they give to incoming students, something that you um, would probably apply for on my grad while you are doing, while you're putting together your application. Um, assistantships can also come from within your department, um, but just to know that you're not limited to assistantships in your home department, you can apply to other assistantships. Um, and then departments also have reader and grader positions. Um, and these would assist with tuition, but also with, um, I guess, room and board, um, your cost of living. And then also internships, fellowships, and then departments. Most departments have funding for their students um, to present at conferences, and some just for students to attend at conferences because of the network op networking opportunities that come with that. So then the second place that you can get this funding, uh, get funding from is from the University of Washington as a whole or from the graduate school. Um, and there are a wide variety of different funding opportunities um, for students in different departments. Um, getting funding for summer research is one. Um, you can get funding for tuition um, from multiple fellowships um, or grants that are offered by UW. Um, the only caveat for fee-based students, um, there are some not all, but some scholarships offered by UW that fee-based students don't qualify for. So just making sure you read the eligibility for these, but it's always very plain and it's obvious who is eligible. And then uh, of course, assistantships, like I mentioned before, um, and RSO funding. And so the third pool and the largest um, pool of money that funding can come from are external organizations. Um, and this is a wide variety of different kinds of organizations. Um, I have a short list of some funding bodies, but this is not exhaustive. And this is, of course, going to be the largest pool of money um, that you can get funding from. And it is also the most competitive because it's not attached to a specific college. It's graduate students um, from within the United States or abroad that are, depending on the funding body that are applying for these. Um, and the funding cycle for external opportunities um, tends to be a little different than within UW, but it is still consistent. So even though you might not have as much time, it gives you plenty of time to plan and you have many more opportunities that you can apply for, whereas within your department or within UW, there is a limited amount of funding opportunities for students. So now that we know the different kinds of funding, um, I can talk briefly about the funding cycle. So, for scholarships, most grants go on a have a six to 12 month funding cycle. Um, so you would apply in the previous um, year for funding for funding for the next academic school year. So funding that you applied for um, now would be for the 2024 to 2025 academic year. And most scholarship applications, not all, but most of them go on a cycle of applications being open from late September to October, and then those applications closing um, between March and April. 
So to work with the funding timeline, these are some things that are good to keep in mind. Um, and I've also accounted for assistantships. Um, those tend to be posted about two to three months before the end of the current quarter. So if an assistantship is hiring for the next quarter, um, they will usually post these opportunities on their website on Handshake or um, they'll get posted to the GFIS blog um, about two to three months before the end of the quarter. Um, I see that people have questions in the chat, um, but to make sure that I'm able to get to these, um, since I'm the only one moderating, um, please make sure to use the Q&A function. Um, let me know if that's not working, but everyone should be able to submit their questions there. Um, so at the end, I'm able to get to all of the questions. I don't wanna miss any of them. So um, if you use this chart um, for the upcoming school year, so the scholarship cycle is closing pretty soon. Um, if any of you have started, your funding search, you might notice that a lot of applications are closed. Um, there are still funding um, opportunities that are available. Um, some funding bodies that are on the later end of the spectrum, like the end of March to April, still have opportunities available. Um, but there are also smaller opportunities that you can find that have a shorter, shorter turnaround. Um, but those funds aren't going to be as extensive as the ones that are on the six to 12 month funding timeline. And for assistantships for, um, for spring quarter or for autumn quarter, you can apply for spring um, in the coming months since the quarter is about to end. So the window for that will be closing, um, but continuing to check Handshake, um, checking um, the GFIS blog, and then also looking other places um, like departments, employment pages. Some of them do post open opportunities for students. Um, you could still inquire if there are assistantships that are currently available. Um, searching for an assistantship for um, autumn quarter in a new academic year, that's the only timeline that tends to be a little bit different just because our summer quarter is so long. And also because offices and departments tend to start recruiting for those a bit earlier because they have um, the knowledge that they're gonna need students to work in these positions. So some assistantships for autumn 2024 have already been posted um, and some of those last for the whole academic year. Um, but those will continue to be posted throughout the summer. Um, so around February, once students are getting offers of admission, um, all the way up until the end of August, because autumn quarter doesn't start until the last week of September, you can still apply to these opportunities. And then after um, that season has passed, um, at the beginning of the autumn quarter of 2024 is when applications for the uh, following academic year, which will be 2025 to 2026, um, will begin to be posted. So from now until the end of the summer is a great time to find any more scholarships that are available, apply for assistantships, and then also start planning your scholarship, your scholarship search for next year. So now that um, we've gone over the timeline, um, the next step is where you can go to find these opportunities. So on the graduate funding research guide, we have a lot of recommended databases, all reputable databases. I know it can be very difficult finding a database that is legitimate with all of the data mining that goes on on some scholarship websites. Um, so sticking to uh, reputable ones are going to be the best so you're not getting a spam with emails and then you're also seeing opportunities um, that are that still exist and they're from uh, reputable funding bodies. So um, you might notice that most of these are from different colleges and universities. 
Um, there's UW scholarship database that is maintained by the Office of Merit Scholarships, Fellowships and Awards. And you can find um, opportunities that are just for UW students um, and then also external opportunities. Um, and so when you're using other university um, maintained databases like the University of Illinois or Harvard's CARAT database, you just have to make sure um, when you're filtering that um, you're finding opportunities that don't require affiliation to a specific university, that they're open to people outside of that school. Um, and then the non university maintained database that we recommend is Career One Stop Scholarship Finder. And this is a massive database that is managed by the US Department of Labor with a lot of opportunities. Um, and using all of these databases, um, crafting your search terms, which we'll get into later, um, is gonna be really important to make sure that you're finding relevant opportunities. And um, we also have recommended databases um, for students um, that have different, um, that have varied citizenship statuses, excuse me. Um, so for international students, um, these are a few lists that we've compiled um, of either scholarship lists or databases that are just for international students that are um, studying in the United States and in Canada. Um, and then for DACA or un undocumented students, Immigrant Rising Scholarship Database is um, a great uh, maintained database that is regularly updated and it has great filtering. It's very easy to use um, with the categories that they have, but you're not limited to these. These are just places that you can search if you fit into one of these groups because all of the opportunities that you're gonna see here, you're not gonna be, um, limit, you're not gonna be ineligible because of your citizenship status. And I would also add that um, UCLA's GRAPES database, which this is also on the Graduate Funding Information Service Research Guide, um, has um, very, has a wide variety of opportunities um, for students um, that aren't US citizens. And they also have pretty good filtering and eligibility um, filters for these, but most databases will have eligibility filters. Um, so just checking uh, those before you're starting your search um, can be helpful for finding opportunities that you're eligible for. So when you're crafting your search terms and using these databases, um, these are a few of the areas that you can find funding in. Um, this isn't a perfect science by any means, but recommendations for the kinds of terms that you can search by. Um, so you can go generally by the awards. Um, so the specific kind of award that you're looking for um, and then your degree. So um, if it's an MA or an MSc, or in my case, it's an MLIS, I kind of crafted these search terms um, for someone that would be in a library and information science field. Um, but then you can also look generally just master's degree funding, master's degree scholarship, graduate scholarship, et cetera. Um, and you can put generally generally what your discipline is, um, but also put a, searching specifically for like what your area of study is, if you're on a specific track, or also what your specific research interests are, academic interests or career interests um, when you're searching um, by a discipline, um, because you'll be able to find opportunities that are maybe more niche, more specific to exactly what you're studying. Um, so you can identify funding opportunities that you would be a good fit for based on specifics. And there are also identity-based scholarships that you can search for. Um, I think when we think of identity-based scholarships, we only think of our salient identities um, and think that only a specific set of identities are what um, there is funding available for. Um, so there are the ones that everyone thinks of like race, ethnicity, cultural heritage, um, gender and sexual orientation. Um, but you can also search um, Specific, there are certain religious organizations that have scholarship. Also, if you are affiliated to any um, clubs or have any existing memberships, 
Um, there are also hobby-based scholarships as well, um, such as people um, that are dedicated to sustainability or the environment, but that's not necessarily what they're studying. Um, there are even scholarships for um, people that, you know, like camping, like the outdoors, scholarships for gamers, um, and people that play a variety of sports. So um, you can be creative when thinking about some of these, like thinking about what your identities are um, and not limiting yourself um, because you don't think there's any funding available for you. So after you have put your search terms together, um, you've decided that you're gonna go and search some of these databases. Um, there are some tips to make sure that you don't get overwhelmed with the search process. The funding process in general is very stressful. Graduate school is expensive, um, but you don't wanna burn yourself out while you're searching or end up in a rabbit hole. Um, so creating a spreadsheet is a great way to stay organized so you can keep track of where you found a certain opportunity. My computer will crash all the time because I have too many tabs open. Um, so making sure that you're um, just keeping track of these, you know, posting the UR, putting the URL in the spreadsheet along with um, the deadline for the application, also making a note of some of the requirements, like is there um, a personal statement? How long is it? Do you need an official transcript or an unofficial one? And how many letters of reference do you need? Uh, letters of reference or recommendation do you need for this specific opportunity? Um, and beyond searching the databases, um, you, you can also search for professional organizations and associations. Um, so in my case, um, a professional um, and educational association for MLIS students is um, the ALA, the American Library Association, and they offer a variety of different scholarships um, for students um, that are getting MLIS degrees. Um, but if you are going into a professional um, field, most professional fields have um, national organizations, also local chapters. There are also affinity groups for people of specific identities. Um, so, um, there's, um, in my case, there's also like um, Black librarian professional organizations. And those um, organizations, some of them will offer scholarships. Um, and if they don't, um, they will have um, usually research pa resource pages um, that will point you to um, other scholarships that are for students um, that are studying or on the same degree path as you are. And um, some colleges, um, some college libraries have library guides that will list out professional organizations for specific um, for, for specific degrees or professional fields. And you can find these using a simple Google search, um, like um, looking up things like social worker professional associations, um, teaching educational organizations, or national association for X. Um, profession that you're going into. Um, and these pages can be very helpful, not only to find um, funding opportunities, but also for networking and then also other professional and educational resources. Um, and lastly, um, I know it's difficult to not, well, it's tempting to spend a lot of time uh, finding funding because um, it's incredibly important. The way that we can go to school, unfortunately, is we have to find a way to um, fund ourselves. Um, but spending 30 to 45 minutes a day on your search um, is going to be the most helpful. Um, you'll make sure that you're finding opportunities that you're a good fit for, not spending too much time just scrounging the corners of the web. And then some days aren't going to be as good. Some days when you're searching, you might not find any opportunities and that can be really discouraging. So just to make sure you stay fresh, you stay committed, um, spending 30 to 45 minutes per day on your search. Um, and then after you found, I'd say seven to 10 um, on the, that's on the larger side, five to seven, um, depending on um how many you think you need to apply for, um, you're in a good place. 
And then you can go to the next step um, with some of these campus resources that I have. After you have identified um, opportunities that you would like to apply to on campus, um, the Office of Merit Scholarships, Fellowships, and Awards, um, along with maintaining a database of funding opportunities, they also assist students um, in putting together their applications. Um, so they can help you edit personal statements, um, help you determine if you would be a good fit for certain opportunities that you've identified. Um, they also have um, informational workshops for some of the larger scholarships um, that they administer on behalf of students such as um, like Ford Foundation, um, NIH scholarships, a National Science Foundation, um, among other ones. Um, so this is a great resource. Um, OMSFA is kind of the next logical step after GFIS um, because GFIS is here to help um, with educational resources and reference resources. But once you're actually in the stage of writing your application, OMSFA um, is a great next step. Um, and then GPSS, um, Graduate and Professional Student Senate, um, they offer a lot of different funding for individuals and then also for RSOs. Um, if you're looking for funding for um, your student club, this is um, the best resource on campus. They have a variety of different funding for student clubs, including um, travel, uh, programming, and events. Um, and you can find out about this on um, the GPSS page. They have a they have an entire page dedicated towards funding, and you can read about the different opportunities that they have there. Um, and other um, student-centered organizations, Leadership Without Borders um, is a student advocacy and support and also just professional training um, for faculty and staff. Um, and they support um, DACA and un un undocumented students um, just with um, leadership support and then also community building. Um, and CIRCLE, um, which stands for the Center for International Relations and Cultural Leadership Exchange, is a great place for um, international students. Um, they do a lot of workshops and then also community building with international students and are really dedicated towards professional development and helping um, international students and equipping them um, with the tools and resources so that you can be successful at UW and beyond. Um, and then once again, if you have any questions about financial aid, um, reaching out to OSFA um, is um, the best place to go. I know there is um, definitely some anxiety when you're making your decision because of the changes in FAFSA. Um, all of the departments, everyone is aware um, of this change, but if you have any additional questions, reach out to them. I would recommend trying to reach out before the end of the quarter, which is coming up um, in a few weeks, because around the beginning of the next quarter and the end of the quarter, they tend to be very busy. Um, and I assume that they will be busy um, next month because the FAFSA deadline was changed and people are getting their um, financial aid packages a lot later. So um, it's really going to be a high demand season for them. So that is all I have for the presentation. We have 20 minutes right now for, um, for questions. Um, and if you want to ask a question, um, feel free um, to turn on your mic. You can also post them in the chat, whichever you would prefer. I can start with some of the questions that were in the chat if no one has any right now. Um, so someone asked, um, how will we know if an assistantship provides a tuition waiver? Um, is it any with 50% full-time equivalent? Um, yes, 
That is correct. So any um, assistantships that have a 50% full-time equivalent um, appointment, those are ones that come with a tuition waiver, um, healthcare benefits, and childcare benefits. And those um, students are required, students in, with those appointments are required to work 20 hours, up to 20 hours per week and 220 hours um, during the quarter. Um, and then just, I didn't, didn't fully get into this, um, but the other ones that are less than 50% full-time equivalent, those are positions where you are working um, 19 hours per week. And as I said, those don't come with a tuition waiver or benefits, but in lieu of those benefits, the stipend is much higher for master's students right now. Um, the salary skills are different if you're a um, master's student, um, a PhD student or in a PhD student in your candidacy. Um, the stipend is $2,600 $2, um, per month. So $2,600 um, per month for master's students with 50% full-time equivalent. Um, and it's somewhere around um, 4,500 for master's students that do not qualify for positions that do not qualify for a tuition waiver. Um, and the question, are there assistantships that go for the whole academic year? Um, yes, there are some assistantships where um, once you are offered um, the position, the term, um, the contract would be for an entire academic year. Um, I can't say this is true for all of them. Um, graduate staff assistantships, those positions do, um, those contracts tend to be the full academic year. Um, with teaching assistantships and research assistantships, that's certainly possible, um, but some of those um, depend on funding for research. And then with teaching assistantships, um, those will depend on if the class is being offered or for how long the class is being offered. Um, and I did see a question about who is eligible. Um, I forgot to mention that, so my apologies. International students and DACA students are eligible um, for assistantships at UW. Um, signing up for emails. So if you go to the GFIS blog, which is at sites.uw.edu backslash GFIS, um, on the, there is a, there's a widget that pops up on your screen that says subscribe with um, a mail icon and it stays on your screen the whole time while you're scrolling. It'll be on the bottom right and you can just click that subscribe button and um, put in your email and you will be able to subscribe that way. Um, yes, there is a database for you for you to have specific assistantships. Um, so the places that students can search for assistantships, there is unfortunately not um, one place where all assistantships are posted. Um, assistantships, are all the assistantships at UW are governed by um, the UAW union contract. And um, in adherence to that, assistantships just have to be posted um, somewhere. So the places they have to be posted is either on the GFIS blog, on Handshake, um, or on a department's page um, because we don't have UW hires anymore. Um, so, if you are um, an incoming student, um, you don't have access to Handshake and Handshake is basically, um, it's the job searching site that universities use. It's like LinkedIn just for colleges and universities. Um, incoming students don't have access to Handshake because you don't get access to it until you pay the student technology fee. Um, that is a part of the registration fees that we have to pay for and you don't get that bill until, until the um, academic year starts, unfortunately. Um, but you can search other places, um, such as, like I said, um, the GFIS blog, also reaching out to your program advisors to see if there are any positions um, that are open in your department or that will be open. Um, also checking 
um, different um, UW departments that either you like you might have studied as an undergrad or that you have experience in some departments when they're hiring research assistants and te teaching assistants, um, they'll have a student employment page and they'll have open opportunities posted there. Um, and then you can also check um, for graduate staff assistance, um, checking some of the student office pages. Um, so an example of some offices that have graduate staff assistance, um, GSEE um, hires GSA, so does Leadership Without Borders. Circle, um, um, the community engagement um, and leadership education, which is CELE Center, also hires um, graduate staff assistants. Um, and you can check the UW on the UW uh, website, searching, searching student life. Um, the student, there's a list of the student life units. Um, and so that will show you various student service offices so you can check their pages um, to see if they have any open employment. Yeah. So yeah, to answer your follow up, Daniel, yeah, it is best to just be searching um, multiple places. Um, starting with your department first um, is the best thing um, to do, I would say. Um, and speaking to your program advisor or um, academic advisor, advisor, whoever it is um, within your home department. Um, and the question from Serena. So, um, about funding for specific hobbies. So, um, GFIS doesn't um, provide a list of specific, I can't really provide a list of specific um, funding opportunities. Those are posted on the GFIS blog. Um, but those are terms that you can use. So, when you're using the databases, um, using search terms um, with some of these things that you've put in the chat, Serena, are gonna be helpful um, for you to find opportunities that align with what you're studying, um, your hobbies and interests, and also um, other things like the degree you're getting or what you're using your funding for. So these are gonna be good for crafting your search terms to find a wide variety of different opportunities. Um, and to answer your question, Len, um, so I went over that. Did you, um, were you able to hear the answer that I was giving about uh, the places you can find TA ships and RA ships? Are there any student fees that are not covered by? Yes. Okay, that's a great question. Um, yeah, so there are some student, there are student fees that are not covered. Um, well, they're not covered by fellowships or scholarships. So there are student fees that aren't covered by assistantships. Um, students are responsible for even assistantships that come with um, tuition waiver. Students are still responsible for paying some registration fees and those might be from the from the graduate school or um, just those that are from their department. Um, but for fellowships and scholarships, um, I'm um, not 100% certain if there are any like administrative fees that would go along with that. But if you receive a large if you receive um, a large scholarship um, that pays for your tuition fees, and then also there's money left over that would pay your registration fees, um, you could use those funds to pay the, the student fees as well.
it would just matter how much um, funding um, you received in the and through the fellowship or the scholarship. Okay. Does money for fellowships from UW get dispersed like financially does? Um, so for fellowships specifically like scholarship opportunities, um, yes, it would be dispersed in the same way. Um, so it would go towards direct deposit if, unless you had, and this is from my own personal experience, um, so talking to financial aid, you can get a more concise answer on this. Um, but yes, if you got a fellowship um, or a scholarship from UW, it would go through um, like your tuition account first. So if you had any, if you had like an active um, tuition balance, those funds would be used to pay for that first. And anything that uh, would be left over would be sent to you um, by whatever means you had identified, either by a check or direct deposit. Um, so we have about eight minutes left. Um, if anyone has any further questions. Um, and um, a funding, a handout for this workshop will be sent to everyone afterwards. Um, and this is being recorded. So a link to the recording um, is gonna be uploaded on the GFIS research guide as well. Well, thank you everyone for attending. If you have any further questions, please reach out to me at gfis at uw.edu or if you would like to schedule an individual consultation, um, you can find the link to book a consultation on the how to find funding research guide um, or um, via email. But the research guide is gonna be the best place because when you email me, I'll send you um, the link for the booking page there as well. Thank you. Of course, thank you so much.